Hello, beautifuls. Hello, hello, hello. Happy afternoon time. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, shit. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, let's pray to God that I stay in the light for this entire call, both physically and metaphorically and metaphysically and all of the above. I'm going to try not to move around too much so I don't mess with the lighting, but hopefully you can see me okay. And hopefully you've got the nice, beautiful greenery going on here. Um, tonight or this afternoon, I'm going to wait for a few people to jump on live, but just making sure I can see you. Um, I'm going to be talking about how to heal your relationship with food and your body. And I haven't spoken, I always get so nervous when I do these because it's like, I want to make sure that I'm touching on everything that I'm meant to touch on. And this, this is this topic, especially, oh my gosh, there is so much that I could say here. There is so much information that I could give you. There are so many stories, holy shit, that I could tell you. There are so many, you know, things that I could say in relation to this topic. And I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys as much value as humanly possible without overwhelming and overloading you. And this is a topic that I don't actually normally speak on. Um, it's not something that's in my sort of like love to speak on category, but it's also something that I know a lot of people have been asking about. And I know it's something that adds absolutely massive value to people's lives when we talk about this stuff. And especially just sharing my own personal story. Um, it's something that I've shared on my blog a couple of times. It's something that I talk about on Instagram quite a lot. If you're not, um, if we're not friends on Instagram, go over and add at Jay Schaefer and I will follow you back and we can be friends over there. It's just the best ever. Um, but this relationship stuff, like especially with food and eating in your body, yeah, like I've had my own personal journey and it's something that I, I honestly don't talk about enough and I kind of wanted to just film this video today because I wanted to put everything that I've learned and everything that I know to really empower and equip you guys um, in one place. I've got a blog post about this up on my website that I will link down below. Um, but I've gotten a couple of questions about this on Instagram lately and um, I've gotten a couple of questions about it in real life as well. So I thought it would just be the perfect opportunity to jump on, share as much as I possibly can in the next like 15 minutes. I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet. Unlike most of my other videos, I end up speaking for like half and 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, but I'm going to keep it short and sweet and give you guys just as much value as I possibly can. So and I'm just trusting that whatever is meant to come through me will come through me. And that whatever I'm meant to say and whatever you guys are meant to hear, whether you're watching the replay or you're watching this live, um, it would just be divinely delivered in the perfect timing. So my relationship with food and my body, I think I was first like consciously aware that I wasn't just like a head floating around. Like as children, right? I was pretty like embodied. Like I was pretty in my body. Most children are. We're kind of born with this physical, this idea that, you know, we're not just like these floating heads walking around. We are, you know, we're physical beings and we, you know, we, we love being in our body as kids. We kind of, we run, we play, we dance, we skip, we jump. We're really physical and active and we love like being outside and running around and just like being and feeling how good these bodies can feel and like seeing how good, you know, they, it can get within these bodies. And at some point, I think a lot of us, you know, girls especially, we kind of, we disassociate from our bodies at some point. And it comes like, it's a culmination of like, being objectified like growing up in a culture that objectifies women's bodies that tells us that women's bodies are to be looked at rather than women looking out at the world that tells us that women's bodies are to be sold or used to sell things are used to are used as commodities um it's like it's the it's a culmination of growing up in a culture that says that being in your body isn't a safe place to be like i've been at i've been you know on the receiving end of some really, you know, just mean, cruel, distasteful, disgusting comments about my body since, you know, pretty much since I can remember. Like people just feeling that they have a right to comment on women's bodies because they're in the public eye or even just because they put a photo up on social media or even just because they're walking around. Like I know every girl I know, every girl, I've, every woman that I've ever spoken to has a story of being catcalled. Um, you know, walking along the street at an age as like as young as 12, like 12 or 13 years old. And it's kind of like we, as women especially, and I don't want to, um, I'm speaking from a woman's perspective because that's what I know here. Like I'm, I want to share this story from my perspective because that's what I know. And men as well, I totally invite you to come in here and share your perspective as well. I would just be so, um, so honored if you did that too. So I think from a woman's perspective, like it kind of, we feel unsafe in our bodies from a really young age. That was certainly my experience. And so I kind of checked out and I kind of, when I was like 12 or 13, I kind of started to have this mind of like this, 
this life of the mind or this life of intellect and you know we know Glennon Doyle Melson talks a lot about us being like triangles so like we're we're, mind, we're equal parts mind body and spirit and the, the really healthy people among us like lives live equal parts in lives of the mind and lives of the body and lives of the spirit and I think for me I was so disconnected from spirit first of all just from you know from the get-go but or from various things that had happened but then I kind of got disconnected from my body and I just lived a life of the mind so I was very intellectual I was very much up in my head I don't know if you guys can resonate a lot with that but I was very much like up in my head I rationalized everything I thought really logically about things everything that you know crossed my field or came into my awareness I was constantly analyzing it and so it was like it, it almost felt and I've described this before in different places especially on my blog it almost felt like I was walking around as a floating head like disassociated from my body and then obviously we know the progression of the story for me was that um, I ended up using my body as a tool to validate my dwindling sense of self-worth so it was like sleeping around in high school it was um, lots of one-night stands in college and throughout university and even like all through my like late teens and early 20s um, when I was going through my addiction and it was like I kind of my body was just this thing that I had to use it was just it wasn't like it, I didn't see it as a part of me I kind of just saw it as this thing separate from me that got me attention that got me what I thought was love that got me likes that got me you know this thing that I could use to yeah to validate who I was in the world and to you know to make people pay attention to me guys especially and I think at the time I placed so much worth on like what guys thought of me or getting other people to sort of see me and say you know hey I'm over here or, or hey I see you that my body was just the way I did that like and the more I showed of it and this is all in my book <laughs> you guys will get so much much juicy detail about all this stuff but it's all coming out in the book um, when the book comes out but it was like my body like the more that I showed of it the more attention that I got the more praise that I received the more like the more validated that I felt in you know in my physical form and so I kind of it was this weird kind of binary situation where I was like I was using my body so it was kind of this thing there but I was also felt so disconnected from it it was like I was yeah like I said I was just this floating head walking around and I started to develop this relationship with my body where I was really frustrated with it it was kind of just this thing that I couldn't get to do what I wanted it to do it was kind of like I would try all these fad diets I would try all these different like 30-day programs and challenges and cleanses and all of these different things but my body wouldn't do what I really wanted it to do and when I was 15 I had a series of injuries at dancing um dancers know this it's just a part of the game it's just a part of it like we all go through you know different injuries and points of you know crisis in our dancing careers for me and um it was like when I was 15 I had it you know I dislocated my knee a couple of times both knees on separate occasions in a couple of times just before like major shows and major performances or major concerts that we had coming up towards the end of the year and it was devastating it was like dancing at the time was like my whole life I was at the studio five nights a week I was obsessed with you know all things dance it was like my home away from home in my escape and not being able to do not being able to perform to the level that I wanted to perform I still performed I still you know pushed through and you know ended up going up on stage three weeks later after like dislocating my knee and having like intense physio pretty much every second or third day for those three weeks but it was like and that's still not I'm really not sure if I'm proud of that or not but it's like I, got, I started to get really frustrated with my body because it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do and I didn't know how to make it do what I wanted it to do. Again, I started around this time, I think I was like 16, 17, my boobs came in overnight. I had these E-cut boobs that I just didn't know what to do with. I started putting on weight around my stomach and my hips and it was like I didn't, yeah, I didn't really know how to make it go away and the images that I was getting and the message that I was receiving was that to be a woman means to be, you know, to, to succeed as a woman means to be beautiful and to beautiful looks like this it looks like x y and z it looks like Victoria's secret models it looks like the girls on the runway of catwalks it looks like the girls in dolly magazine in bikinis like that's what it means to be a woman that's what it means to be successful as a woman and to you know in order to to be you know who you want to be in the world or in order to be valued and appreciated and respected and adored and loved for who you are you need to look like this and it was like and my body was going the complete opposite direction so here i was getting these messages you need to shrink you need to be small you need to be shapely and toned and have big this and small this and like and look like this but my body was doing the complete opposite it was like staging the ultimate rebellion and it was like holy fuck what do I do with this so I just disconnected more I disassociated more I got more angry at my body I started um, you know binge drinking treating my body like absolute rubbish just filling it with absolute crap um, using it again to, to validate my sort of sense of self-worth but also to repress my emotions and this is when my whole battle and the um, destructive like cycle with binge eating and food came into it is that like 
I started using food and eating as a way to suppress what I didn't want to feel. So I had, it was this awful cycle of like, I had all these emotions coming up around food and anger and, um, you know, resentment and frustration and fear. And because I didn't want to feel them, because I didn't know how to be in my body, because my body was this scary place that I had not, hadn't been in since I was like 12, like 11 or 12 years old, I just... I didn't know how to process through those emotions so I would eat to push them down and it's kind of like that classic beach ball analogy of like there's only so long that you can hold a beach ball underneath the water before the pressure builds up your arms get exhausted and everything explodes so I would have and I've spoken about this before on a few different videos but I would have these like little mini explosions so it was like I would be repressing 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 eating 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 and I go into binge cycles where I quite literally like didn't remember um, didn't remember what I ate or didn't remember how I got to where I did like I'd sort of you know come to like I'd go into this stage of not unconsciousness but I go into the state of I would just sort of tap out of like check out of like life in my mind and my body and then I'd sort of come to and I'd be in the kitchen surrounded by like you know rappers and whatever and it was like this cycle went on for probably about two or three years like at the worst I was probably like just raiding different like housemates cupboards and pantries and different things for whatever I could get my hands on just to sort of numb what I was feeling and numb these emotions but when you know when when it did get too much when my arms did get too sore when the beach ball did get just like to the the pressure and the weight of it got too much it was literally just like i'd have these mini explosions and outbursts and that would often result in me you know causing drama wherever i went creating havoc like it was a very volatile time i kind of like I kind of felt like a little, like, <laughs> like a volcano, just having these like minor explosions every now and then. And the people around me copped it, like my family, my friends, my partners, and like my boyfriend at the time. Um, yeah, my housemates, like my people around me really copped it because I was just so volatile and I didn't know how to process my emotions. So that was kind of one of the ways that I guess food came into it. But again, it's like, it's continuing this cycle of um, eating to suppress the emotion. And then that obviously creating more stagnant energy in the body, which then creates more residual tension and energy and emotion that um, that leads to like things like weight gain things like sickness things like disease things like um, trauma things like mental health issues do you know what I mean so it's like it's this it was this endless cycle that I was trapped in and I just want to like preface this whole thing um, halfway through the video I just want to preface this whole thing by saying like this was like the one of the things this is the one thing that I didn't ever think that I would get over and it just like it completely blows me away so that I get to sit here and talk about this. And I'm just so endlessly grateful every single day that even now, like as I put my hands on my stomach, I couldn't do that for like five years, you guys. Like I couldn't even look down in the shower. Like I couldn't, you know, it was at the point where, yeah, like even just like brushing my hand, like accidentally brushing up against my stomach would just send me like, I'd have like, um, what's called like a gag reflex, like a nauseous response. I couldn't walk past mirrors without like, and glance at my reflection without like a million critic, self-critical thoughts. My inner critic just going on high volume high repeat over and over and over in my head and the thing with that is that it takes up our energetic um it takes up our energy like the, the freedom that comes this is what i'm going to talk about later but the freedom that comes with like quietening or dispelling or releasing and um dissolving those voices in your head is just like next level and that's the whole point of this work is like we want to get to a point where this inner critic stuff isn't like taking up most of our time isn't taking up all of our energy so yeah this is the one thing that i thought that i would never get over it was the one thing that i kind of like i thought that i would be 40 and still like in a relationship with my body like hating my body i thought i would be one of those moms that passed on their like their self-loathing onto their like to their daughters i hated that idea like i hated the thought of having to carry this with me but that was kind of all i saw like i looked around in the world and you know i saw women berating themselves for reaching for a second slice of cake i saw women looking in the mirror and, and pre, like picking and prodding and um you know picking up all the different like roles and picking out their flaws and the things they hated about themselves like i saw women on tv like in movies in our culture like i saw people on tv and um in tv shows and movies talking about how like guilty they felt for eating you know bad food or how unhappy they were in their bodies or how you know much they wanted to get skinny and it was like i was just like oh this is just something that i have to deal with as a woman like growing up in the world this is just something that you know we deal with like add it to the list kind of thing and that kind of, that's devastating to me when i think about that now and it's devastating to me that you know hundreds and thousands of women walk around like that every single day and it's kind of like i try and you know remember as often as i can and get grateful as often as i can that you know this journey has unfolded the way that it has and i can genuinely say that coming from that place of deep like self-loathing and like wanting to just wanting to completely disconnect and get out of my body just not wanting to be here not wanting to be in my physical body not wanting to look at my physical body not wanting to have 
anything to do with me and our bodies like they're literally the, the vehicles that our soul has chosen or our spirit or whatever you believe in is chosen to to be in and to run around in, in this like this planet so it's like it's kind of important that we have a good relationship with them but to go from over there like yeah not wanting to be in my body just absolutely I can't even yeah I'm not even gonna say anymore but just know knowing that it was just this complete yeah just complete not like hate and frustration and just anxiety and angst and fear and all of this stuff to now knowing that I wake up every single freaking day and this is an ongoing process you guys it's not something like you wake up one day and it's over but knowing that I can 100% appreciate this beautiful body that I've been blessed with and it wasn't a case and just knowing that like and knowing and feeling how good it feels to be in my body like every single day and feeling actually centered and grounded in my body rather than just being in my mind and having that beautiful like we said we talked about before the three parts the healthy life of the spirit life of the mind life of the body let me know if this is resonating you guys as well just pop me a couple of comments below just to let me know you can hear me and let me know if this is landing with you at all I know this is something a lot of um guys and girls um especially young people um or people at all stages in life really struggle with so let me know if this is landing um but this isn't something like i said that happened overnight and it's also not something like i um i've been pretty open about like my i've lost a, quite a bit of weight this year and kind of i've liked to say that i've relaxed into my natural shape now um now that i found you know this incredible system that works really well for me and um, you know, this incredible, beautiful system of products that nourishes my body on every level, like mentally, emotionally, and physically and spiritually. It's like, but it, it didn't happen after I did that. Like I didn't lose the weight and then love my body. It's the other way around. Like I loved my body. I went through this journey. I healed my relationship with food and my body. And then I relaxed into my natural shape. It's not like a, we get so caught up in this mentality and it's kind of like we get fed this message a lot of the time that it's like, oh, when I'm skinny, then I'll love my body. Or like, I have to get my shit together and then I'll come to God. Or like, I will, you know, I'll go and do the thing. I'll go and try harder. I'll go and hustle. I'll go and get the promotion. I'll go and earn more money. And then I'll be worthy of love. And then I'll be worthy of my own respect. And then I'll be worthy of my own attention. And then I'll be able to get a husband or a boyfriend or a partner or whatever it is. And it's like, it's the complete opposite way around like I wrote this beautiful quote today I want to see if I still have it up here oh pressure 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 to find it um I wrote this beautiful quote because it was like it just rang so true for me um it came to me yesterday morning when I was in meditation and it says hold on two seconds I will post it on my Instagram but it says Faith precedes the blessing, belief precedes the doing, and unconditional love precedes the healing. And it's like, we go first with this stuff. Like we don't wait for our body to change and then love it. We love our body and then it changes because of the effects of unconditional love than what they have on our body. Does that make sense? So it's like, for me, I did this stuff before I even believed in it. Like I did this stuff as kind of like a last ditch attempt. And this is so like, I, <laughs> I just want to speak to this really quickly because it's like, when we talk about the stuff that we're about to talk about, the tools and the principles and the whatever, a lot of it is like, it's the energetic work. It's the spiritual work. It's the inner, the deep inner work. You don't have to believe in it for it to work. Like, I know that sounds far out and I know that sounds like woo woo and whatever, but it's like half this stuff. Like I swear I'm the most like skeptical woo woo that it, like they ever lived on the planet like half of this stuff I only tried it because it was a last ditch attempt I'd only tried it because I'd done the hustling I'd done the slamming myself at the gym I'd done the eating broccoli and tuna and boiled chicken for three meals a day for six months of the year and losing nine kilos and then putting it all back on again like I'd done the smashing myself at the gym I'd done the intervals every day like th three times a week like I'd done all the hard yards and ended up right back where I started and not any happier like even when I was at like my quote unquote skinniest I was so obsessed with like keeping like keeping control of everything that I had to do to stay at that weight and stay in that body that it was like not even worth being there because it wasn't even fun to be there here I was thinking that oh when I have this body I'll have so much fun and I'll feel so free and I'll be able to go to the beach in this bikini and wear this out and like all the guys will love me and I'll be so happy and it was like I was so scared about eating too many calories or obsessing about food or like or over consuming for that like day that I had that it was like I couldn't enjoy any of it and even when I did go out I was so like again still wrapped up in that sense of like my external validation and my worth is tied up in how I look that I couldn't actually fully embrace what I had if that makes sense so it was like I because I've done 
like because I'd done the external stuff, the hustling, the pushing a boulder up a mountain thing, I was desperate and I knew that it didn't work for me and I knew that it didn't work full stop for anyone that I saw. I was desperate for another way. Like I was so desperate for another way. I was so like, I was so desperate to just try something that felt easy, to try something that felt um, graceful, to try something that felt kind of like effortless. And I used to see all these, like read all these blog posts of women that would be like, how I lost weight without even trying. And I did this and I just love my body and be like, yeah, whatever. Like I honestly didn't like, I, like I said, I was the most skeptical woo-woo on, woo -woo on the planet, but I was so desperate to change that I would have tried anything at the time. And everything that I did, I didn't believe that it worked until I saw it work, if that makes sense. So it's like, I didn't really believe, <laughs> I didn't really believe that any of this stuff would work. Like any of the stuff that I do around money, around manifestation, around like loving my body or like energy like metaphysics like I didn't I didn't really there was still so much like doubt in me I didn't really believe any of it would work until it did and then it was like I saw the proof in the pudding and I saw that you know my body started to change in response to my love to it I saw that I could walk past a mirror glance at my reflection and not want to throw up I saw that I could you know be more kinder to myself and how that changed the way that I related to other human beings I saw the results of like this new inner dialogue and how that affected my outer world and it was like holy shit this stuff works and so it's like as I'm talking about this stuff you guys like have in your head I totally get the skeptic side I totally get the mindset that's like like, this doesn't work this is bullshit this is woo woo this is whatever I totally get that but if you're ready for another way like give it a go play around with it experiment with it have fun with it go into it with the energy of like I'm just gonna try this on and see if it works I'm just gonna try this for me and see if it works and if it doesn't you have absolutely nothing to lose and if it does then you have the most incredible relationship and soulful connection with your body to gain and I just can't even describe how important that is for living like a full embodied like soul embodied life it's just like the most amazing thing ever um, so I've got my blog post up here and there's a couple of things in here that I would love to just read for you guys and um, just to talk about like what, you know, what kind of helped me really heal my relationship with my body. But um, one of the first things that I really felt really resistant to in the beginning um, that just completely transformed everything for me was mirror work. So actually like genuinely standing in front of the mirror and looking at myself. I have heard of women talk about doing this naked. I've heard about women saying, get out of the shower, stand there, look at your body, embrace your flaws, embrace your curves and everything. The thought of doing that when I first started this, like the, the thought of actually doing that and seeing myself like full frontal in the mirror without any clothes on, made me want to run into a hole and die. Like it literally made me want to curl up in a ball and never ever come out. Like if I thought about doing that, then there is no way I would have even taken a step. So it's like baby steps, whatever you can do. For me, it was just like, it was looking at my reflection and instead of picking up and criticizing my physical flaws, it was going, what can I love about myself today? What am I actually really happy with? What would I not change even if I had the option to? Do you know what I mean? So so it was like, instead of looking at myself in the mirror and I can't even, it feels so weird now because I used to literally look at my reflection. It's almost like I see a completely different woman now to the one that I used to see. Like I used to pick out my nose. I used to pick out this scar under my eye. I used to pick out like my one eye is like slightly more closed than the other. I used to pick out like the, my eyes are too close together or my nose is too wide or whatever. Like so many flaws about my physical features. And so I just started with that tiny little shift, that tiny little tweak of going, okay, what would I not change about my body even if I had the option to? What do I actually really love about my physical form right now? The first thing for me was like, I love the color of my eyes. Full stop, end of story. Guys have like always complimented me on my eyes. It's so weird. Guys call them puppy dog eyes and chocolate brown eyes and coffee eyes and whatever. So I was like, all right, I'll start there. Like I know that that's something that I can get on board with. So I literally would just look at myself in the mirror. So I was getting ready for work. So I was doing my makeup, getting ready for school, whatever. I would literally, or uni or whatever. I would literally just look in the mirror and say, okay, you know what? I love my eyes. I'm so grateful for my eyes and I would focus on my eyes until that was all I could see I would try as hard as I could to block out all of the voices being like but what about your nose but what about your eyebrows but what about this but what about that but what about your boobs but what about your waist what about your chest all of that sort of stuff I would try and let it go and just focus on you know what today I love my eyes and then the next day it might be you know what today I love my nose a little bit more because of what it can do for me do you know what I mean and the next day it was like okay today I, you know I love the the way that my cheeks go kind of rosy when I'm like talking about something that I love or I love the color and like the complexion of my skin or I love the you know the way that even just little things you guys like the way that your voice sounds when you get all excited or when you laugh like I love my laugh like I just think my laugh is hilarious and all of my friends like pay me out about it massively but I don't care because I think it's freaking hilarious and you can hear me coming from a mile away <laughs> and you can like tell it's me from wherever I am in the world but it's like 
focusing on those tiny little things, making that tiny little shift, all of a sudden it starts to reframe your mind to look for things that you're super happy about already rather than being self-critical. And what you're doing is you're quite literally rewiring and re like creating new neural pathways in the brain. So don't expect this to happen overnight. It takes time, it takes energy, it takes effort, and it takes um, perseverance and persistence as with anything um, in this life. But you are lit quite literally re rewiring neural pathways in the brain. So for me, it was like, yeah, focusing on those little things that I loved every single day. It was the next thing, and this is so important, important that I just can't even stress this enough but you guys the next thing was actually giving myself permission to feel my emotions holy shit like I cannot tell you how important this is in absolutely anything like the most profound personal development that I've ever done is allowing myself to fully feel like allowing myself to be in my body allowing myself to feel what I need to feel feel the emotions that I need to feel feel the anger feel the sadness feel the anxiety feel the pain feel the fear feel the joy feel the frustration, feel the like anger, I said that already, but feel whatever it is that I need to feel in my body. And because what happens when we disassociate, what happens when we disconnect is that we kind of, <laughs> it's this awful double-edged sword of like, you don't feel the anger and the pain and the frustration as much, but you also don't feel the joy and the happiness and the excitement and the anticipation and the enthusiasm. So it's like, you can't numb, Brene Brown talks about this all the time, but she says, you can't numb the pain without also numbing joy. You can't be, you can't not like ward yourself or um, sort of like armor yourself or armor up against the hard things and the shit things and the messy things about your life without also blocking yourself off from the good things and the joy and the peace and the bliss and the beauty and the freedom and the ecstasy and the passion. And all of those incredible things that are waiting and that life is waiting to give you and that your body is waiting to feel and that your body was built to feel. One of my clients, I had this beautiful session with a client the other day and she's like, we were talking about the exact, this exact topping and feeling into her body and feeling into her emotions and she was like, well, what if I can't pick myself back up again? And this is, I 100% relate to this because it's like, what if I get to a point where, you know, I'm, you know, crying on the floor, like I can't, I literally, like I, I go so low that I can't get back up again. Your body was designed to hold you in this. You have the strength to hold yourself through this. When I talk about releasing emotion, all I mean is quite literally asking and tuning into where in your body you're feeling tense, where in your body you're feeling tight, where in your body you're feeling anxious. If you wake up in the morning, you feel ugh. If you wake up in the morning, you feel heavy. If you wake up in the morning, if you feel sad or depressed or whatever it is, going into your body instead of just running straight into your day and saying, oh, you know what, that's just a normal part of life. That's just how everyone feels. This sort of underlying permeating anxious static is just part of daily life on the planet now. Let's just get used to it tuning in, dropping in from your head, walking down those stairs to your heart and into your body and saying, where is this? Where am I storing this? What is this emotion and where am I storing it? Where the hell is it coming from and how can I let it go? And for me, <laughs> but, and for me, it's like, it's often in my hips, like women, especially, we carry a lot of like tension and tightness and ugh, like shit, um, like stored residual emotion around our hips and our thighs and our, um, our stomachs as well. And around like the back here and you can't see, but I'm touching just above my butt. But it's like we carry a lot of, yeah, we carry a lot of tension there. And a lot of the reason is because that's where we store a lot of our pent up emotion. The things that we don't feel become trapped in our body and that's, you know, causes disease, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Let's not go down that path right now. We can talk about that later in another video. But it's like dropping in. Yeah, if you wake up and you feel stuck, if you wake up and you feel blah, if you wake up and you feel, oh, what, what is it today? Dropping into your body, asking yourself, okay, where, what am I not feeling? First of all, what am I not feeling that I need to feel? What am I not facing that I need to face? What am I not experiencing? What am I not allowing myself to release that I need to release? What's like stuck here that wants to come up? Because all emotions want is to be felt. Let's just like all emotions want is to be felt. They don't want to hurt you. They don't want to, I'm personifying them now, but it's like our emotions don't want to cause us physical pain or hang around for any longer than they need to, right? It's not like this, you know, torture game where someone's just playing a trick on you. It's like your body is literally just storing this emotion and it wants to let us let it go as much as you do. So for me, it's like getting on my yoga mat and saying, okay, where do I feel it? Right, my hips are really tight. I'm gonna do like pigeon pose. If you guys know yoga, of course you guys know yoga, but like getting into pigeon pose, that's like a big one for me. It always makes me cry. But getting into pigeon pose, feeling into the tension, breathing beautiful space and light and air and energy and just breathing like peace or calm or oxygen or whatever you wanna call it into that space like literally imagine it coming in through your nose and breathing it into that beautiful space and then as you breathe out letting it release and feeling whatever you need to feel that comes up out of that whether you need to cry whether you need to scream and I mean like actually scream into a pillow not like oh I feel really angry right now 
I should probably go eat something. No, like screaming into a pillow if you need to scream into a pillow. I think we've kind of lost touch. Like we've kind of become a little bit in the domesticated society that we live in. We've come a little bit, become a little bit disconnected from that like raw, untamed, wild, primal nature that exists within all of us, like where we come from, right? And it's so easy to get caught up in this like civilized life. But you know, I've been screaming into a pillow pretty much every day or every second day for the last six months. Because it turns out I have a lot of things that I'm angry about. And it turns out that I have a lot of anger that I never felt at the time. It turns out, like the appropriate... I was listening to a podcast the other day and Glennon Doyle talks about this. And I will move on in a second. But she talks about how the appropriate response to a world of injustice is anger. And yet we're taught that, especially as women, that anger is unfeminine. That anger is kind of not something that we really know what to do with. As ang Like men, stereotypically, men tend to externalize their anger and it manifests as outward violence. Women tend to internalize their anger and it manifests as inward violence, self-harm, self-hatred, like all of these self-loathing, self, yeah, whatever it is that we do to ourselves to avoid feeling the pain that we want, that we need to feel or avoid feeling the emotion that we need to feel. So whatever it is for you, go and scream into a pillow, go down to the beach. Andy, I love that you and Kate are just such a beautiful example of this. I'm just going to shout you out really quickly. Andy, I'm just going to, yeah, totally call you out and just like sing your praises along with Kate on this call because it's like, they literally, like Annie and Kate, you guys, epic couple, posted a video the, the other night of them going down onto the beach and doing raw primal screams out into the atmosphere. It was literally like they were down there. It was pitch black. I think, Andy, you can like back me up on this, but it was like 10 o'clock at night, I think. And you guys just went down there and had some shit that you needed to release and like let go of some pent up stuff. And they literally just filmed them like raw primal screaming into the darkness. And it was just the most beautiful liberating thing. So I was like, shit, I do that all the time, like into my pillow or in, the, in my lounge room in the middle of my working day when I just have some shit that I need to let go of from like, and this can be stuff, you guys, this isn't stuff that's just like coming up now. This can be stuff that we didn't release from when we were two years old, from when we were three years old and our parents told us not to cry over this spilt milk literally or figuratively, from when we were five years old and we were told to sort of hurry up, we're gonna be late for swimming, you're not allowed to feel um, nervous right now, you're not allowed to feel anxious right now, you're not allowed to feel angry right now because it's not, a, it's not an appropriate time for you to experience this emotion. So we could have repressed it from then. Do you know what I mean? Like there's no statute of limitations on this shit. If it's there, if it's happened, if it's been repressed, it needs to come up and out. And it's like Marianne Williamson talks about this a lot. I absolutely love her book, Tears of Triumph, but she talks a lot about how there's like, there's an, there's a number of tears that we need to cry. Like when we're going through grief, when we're going through mourning, when we're going through any sort of like, um, turmoil or, um, just like tragedy in our lives. It's like, there are a number, a specific number of tears that we've been assigned for that particular like grieving period. And it's not over until we've cried every single one of those tears. And that looks different for everyone. It looks different for every like thing that we go through, but it's like, it's not, it's not done. You're not done with it until you release every single one of those tears. So just trust that as you're going through this, as you're, um, feeling all this emotion, number one, you can hold yourself through it. You can back yourself through it. You can be in your body through it and you can survive it. Not only can you survive it, but you will thrive through it. And number two, that it's for a purpose, that it's serving a greater purpose than you can even see right now. And that it's really, it's making room and it's making space for something so much better to come through. And I said that I would talk about this before and I want to briefly touch on this now, but it's like the freedom, you guys, that comes on the other side of being in a beautiful, harmonious relationship with your body and releasing all of the shit that you've been carrying around. It's like the emotional baggage metaphor of like taking off that 10 ton backpack. But physically, it's kind of, for me, it's like my soul was allowed to come back Back into my body it, it means like embodiment it means like rather than being walking around as a floating head and being disconnected it was like I was allowed to re-enter my body it was a it was like I was allowed to be in this experience fully it was like I was allowed to feel and be in the world for the first and actually experience being in my life and being in the world for the first time and I honestly don't think we can consciously create without that connection it's I honestly don't believe that we can you know fully be the masters of our destiny and the captains of our soul and the you know the, the architects of our fate unless we have like we've gotten into this beautiful state of embodiment and that doesn't mean you guys like I said it's not something that happens overnight it's not something where you flick a switch and this is it it's something that is a daily process it's something that happens every single freaking day it's a choice that I make every single day to love my body in the face of fear, to love my body in the face of a world that is constantly telling me that I should hate it, to love my body in the face of, you know, in the face of a society and a culture that says that unless a woman looks like this, then she should feel ashamed or she should feel this or she's not worthy of attention or respect or she's not valuable or whatever. Like it's a, it's a choice that I make to reprogram my mind, to come back to love, to 
unfold and like un to let unravel all of the bullshit conditioning that we're exposed to on a daily basis like constantly it's a choice that i make every single day but it's oh my god it's worth it oh my god it's so worth it um but yeah the freedom that comes on the other side of doing that is like it's it really is next level and like i said before you guys it's not a case of I used to watch videos like this and I used to see women talking about their journey to loving their body. And I used to have this story that's like, oh, well, it's so easy for them. Like she's blonde, she's skinny, she's this, she's that. It's not a case of we already fit within the mold, so it's easier for you. It's not a case of this only works for women who are X, Y, and Z. This only works for men who are, you know, fit within this criteria. It's not a case of like this only applies to you if you look a certain way or are a certain way in the world like we all have our shit to overcome and we all we've all been placed in these bodies for a reason like our soul chose these bodies for a reason but i i specifically remember sitting here watching videos like this and being like oh well it's so easy for you because you look x y and z it's not necessarily about looking or fitting into what society tells you is like the standard of what it means to be beautiful. It's about the individual journey that each human being goes on and how they're programming, how they've grown up. Like you could have someone that is a Victoria's Secret model that fits that like ideal body type or whatever bullshit stereotype is considered beautiful now. Um, that's been told their whole life they're not enough, that is where they are today because they have felt like they had to prove themselves, because they felt like they had to do that in order to be worthy, in order to be valuable, in order to be loved. And that to me is just as damaging as someone that um, has had the complete opposite experience, if that makes sense. But like I said before, it's not a case of I will get to that place or I will love myself when, or I'll get to that place and then I love, I'll love myself, or I'll get to that place and then I'll nourish my body and give, it what, what she, give her what she needs. For me, it was literally a case of I did all this work for a year and a half. Like it was literally, it was from woe to, woe to go. And by go, I mean like the place where I felt like I could genuinely like touch my stomach, be in my body, walk around in a bikini and feel confident on the beach rather than like wanting to run and hide and feeling like I was insecure and inadequate and would never match up or never amount to anything because I didn't look like the girls that I thought were beautiful on the beach. Um, it, yeah, it was like 18 months of like solid work. And when I say solid inner work, I mean like I was journaling on this shit every day. I was writing letters to my body. I was working with coaches on this. I was listening to podcasts. And as much as like it's the intellectual stuff of like psychology of eating podcasts and YouTube videos and channels and tutorials and blog posts and stories, other women's stories, so healing. Oh my God, listening to other women's stories is so healing. Like get around women who are really willing to be honest with you about their stories. As much as it's the intellectual stuff, it was really, it was a combination of that and the embodiment stuff and the emotion stuff and the releasing stuff um, and the soul embodiment, like the stuff that we talked about before as well. It was a combination of that for like a solid 18 months um, before I could get to this point where I was like, you know what, now I'm ready to call in what feels good to my, like feel call in an eating routine and a lifestyle that feels really good to my body and really good to my soul. And that's when, you know, I manifested the um, system that I'm on now. And it was just this beautiful, like divine orchestration of like, okay, you've done the work, you've asked for it. Now you're ready for it. Now here you go. And that's when I was introduced to this whole program and it was just, it's unfolded really organically. And then my body released what no longer serves it. And I've become like a, reframes like discipline around my body into devotion to my body and that's just like 100 percent just been such a game changer for me as well so reframing discipline around your body to devotion into devotion to your body um if you're taking notes write that one down because that's just been a total shape shifted everything for me um, um 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 but that's the thing you guys like i will just touch on this really quickly before we finish up but it's like i focused on I spent a lot of time focusing, I did the inner work, but I focused on the internal rather than the external. Like I knew that I wasn't gonna heal my body from the outside in. I wasn't gonna change my body from the outside in. I've tried that before, I'd tried that before, but I knew that any sustainable lasting change, and that's what we're going for here. It's like, there's, to me, there's no point like transforming your body if it lasts for 16 weeks and then you're guilt eating the food and putting the weight back on again. There's no point getting to a place where you fit the stereotypical mold and you're so, for me, it was like being so obsessed with trying to stay there that I couldn't enjoy, like enjoy, quote unquote, enjoy any of it. So it's like for sustainable change, for sustainable transformation, it's gotta be an inside job. It's gotta start from within and then journey out. And for me, that 
yeah, that inner work looked like, yeah, loving myself unconditionally, looking at all the places in myself where I hadn't given myself love physically and emotionally, looking at, you know, all of the, the people in my life that I needed to forgive and let go of, all of the, the limiting beliefs that I had telling me that I wasn't enough, telling me that I would never be enough, telling me that um, I didn't fit into this world, telling me that I didn't um, belong here, like all of these bullshit limiting beliefs and stories that I'd had from such a young age, from other people telling me and trying to shape my identity, from me telling myself from ideas that I picked up like in culture and whatever. It's like, there are so many ways that we can inherit and like adopt and kind of pick up on these limiting beliefs. Like we're like magnets when we're little, we walk around like absorbing all of the shit that the world tells us. But I don't know, for me, it was like the inner journey and the inner transformation is deciding who I am, deciding that I'm worthy, deciding that I'm enough, deciding that I'm gonna change the world just because I said so. And it's not, like someone asked me the other day about the energy of deciding and like, what do you mean you can just decide? What do you mean you can just like choose it? What does that even look like? And for me, like the energy of deciding is really just about knowing your worth. It's about like, and worthiness is like, this is just such a tangent, but the energy of deciding is just knowing that you're enough because you said you are. Just because, full stop, end of story. There's no asterisks. There's no, I'm enough because... I've done this or I'm enough because I achieved that or I'm enough because I weigh this or look like this or feel like that. It's just, I'm enough, full stop, end of story. And that to me is the energy of deciding, whether it's deciding around abundance, whether it's deciding around body love, whether it's deciding around your weight, whether it's deciding around your career, whether it's deciding around your relationships. It's just saying, it's just making that conscious choice that I am enough, I am worthy, I am valuable full stop, end of story. No one can question that. No one can tell me otherwise. No one can call that into question because it's not up for debate anymore. And the thing with like these identities that the world gives us, or the things with letting the world tell us who we are and letting the world shape our identity is that we're constantly getting feedback from the outside in. We're constantly being told who, we're meant, or who we are, who we're meant to be, what will be better, like what will be better about our lives if we do this, what we should buy, what we should wear, how we should color our hair, how we should dye this, how we should wear that. It's like we're constantly being told what will make us worthy, what will make us valuable, what will make us good enough. And to me, it's like if we keep living by those external um, voices, they're always going to change. And so we're always going to have to change. And it's kind of like this endless fucking competition of keep like this endless life goal of keeping up with the Joneses, but the Joneses is everyone else's voices and the Joneses are always changing and the Joneses can't make up their freaking mind about what they want from you. And these voices are like the media and our parents and well-meaning people in our lives and our girlfriends and our boyfriends and our partners that we love so much and our children. And it's like, we're taking on all this stuff and the energy of deciding for me and when everything changed for me, when everything shifted in my life, and I'm not just talking around my, about my body here, I'm talking about just like everything in my life in general shifted when I decided to emanate from the inside out rather than, or I decided to tell the world who I was rather than letting the world tell me who I should be. I decided who I was and then I went out and showed that to the world. I stopped letting other people tell me who they thought I should be, who they thought I should be in order to be good enough, what I needed to be in order to be worthy, what I needed to be in order to be valuable and like valued and respected and get attention and be adored. I just decided who I was. I found out who I was. I uncovered all of the bullshit. I discovered this incredible human being that's infinite, that's like whatever, magic, whatever. <laughs> whoever it is that you are underneath all of this stuff, underneath all of this shit, I decided. And then I went out and showed that to the world. That was it. That's the energy of deciding. It's saying I'm enough because I said so. Because God said so, because the universe said so, because I'm a child of God, because I'm a child of the universe, because I'm made of the same stuff as the stars and the crystals and the earth and the stars and the sky and the stones and whatever, whatever language like resonates for you, whatever like feels really good in your bones. But to me, it's like, I'm enough because I said so because God tells me I am because I'm a child of the universe just because there's no asterisks. That's just, that's it. Full stop. End of story. Um, but that's when everything shifted for me is when I decided that and I lived that out rather than waiting for everyone to tell me that I was enough because of what they had for me. Um, yeah. And I guess like there's so much more, like I said at the beginning, there's so much more that I could say about this. Um, there's so much, so many more stories that I can tell and they'll all be in the book, but if this is something that you guys want to learn more about, um, definitely go over to my blog. Um, I'll just say really quickly, like this whole, like getting in your body thing, like exercise for me is like a really beautiful celebration of my body now and what we can do together. It's not a way to punish myself. It's not a way to burn off calories. It's not a way to be like, oh shit, I ate an entire tub of that really yummy new Magnum ice cream last night. 
hands up, ate three over my birthday weekend. Not even sorry, it was fucking amazing. They were on sale, half price at Woolies. Best deal ever. Um, but it's like, it's not about saying, okay, well I did that, therefore I have to go and like work it off. It's that classic mentality of like repentance or like, again, like hustling for forgiveness. It's like, oh, well you did something bad, so go make up for it. You sin, so go say seven million rosaries or like Hail Marys. It's like, no, 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 I did the thing and it felt really good in my body. It might not have been like, might not have been the healthiest choice, but it felt really good and it was where I was at right then. I accept myself for that. I love myself unconditionally anyway. And so now I'm going to go to the gym. If I feel like it, I'm going to go to the gym because it feels really good in my body because it feels really good to run because it feels really good to lift because it feels really good to be, it feels like, like I'm powerful, like I'm strong. And it's like, I know that one of the things that I'll miss when I'm old and gray is like being able to be in my body and this feeling of feeling just so strong and alive and active and just like secure and safe and just like, ugh, in my body. So like, ugh. <laughs> That was a good sound um, in my body. So for me, yeah, that's what exercise is for me now. It's not a punishment. It's a reward. That's it. That's it. That's it. Um, okay, you guys, if you want to know more about this, I'm going to link the blog post below. Um, go and check it out. There's a whole bunch of beautiful, really amazing um, intuitive eating, um, healthy mind, body, spirit stuff, resources that helped me so much on my journey. But just know, and I just want to speak this over you guys right now, that freedom is just waiting for you it's yours it's already there it's already yours like i said at the beginning i really did think that this was the one mountain that i would never climb i really did think that this was the one you know the one hill that i could never get up the one hill that would just be this endless like battle with my body that i would never ever get on top of and to be standing at the top of the mother freaking hill and looking down at that journey looking down at that woman who was struggling looking down at that woman who was like so obsessed with food and exercise and eating so wrapped up in this physical shell that she had to control and restrict and restrain in order to, and limit in order to be worthy who was so just like frustrated and like burnt out and like what the like hopeless around this whole situation and to just be able to send her so much freaking love and be able to say you know what it's coming like your breakthrough is coming worthiness is already yours like it's 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 happening it's already happened you you're you're so close don't give up like that's just yeah that's what i would say to her and it's just it's just the most beautiful feeling ever in the whole history of the world. But this is what I, and this is what I use now, you guys, like whenever I think about the next big thing that I am struggling to overcome or the next hurdle that I have to reach, the next mountain that I have to climb or get to climb, the next like thing in my life, whether it's like relationships or spirituality or whatever, I, I use this as my like reference point, my courage reference point, as beautiful, the beautiful Rachel McDonald will call it. I use it as my courage reference point to say, you know what, if I did that, I can fucking do anything. Like if I did that, then I can transform my mindset around, if I can transform my mindset around this, then I can transform my mindset around that. If I can transform and completely change the way that I look at my body without my body even changing one iota, and that's another thing, complete radical acceptance, but we'll talk about that in another video. But it's like, if I can completely transform the way that I look at my body and my body can change as a result of that, or I can completely change the way that I, my perspective on this and the way that I look at this, then I can change the way that I look at money. Then I can change the way that I look at sex. Then I can change the way that I look at relationships and health and spirituality and freedom and abundance and my mind and whatever else I want to change in my life. So it's like, know that if you can do it in one area, just you can take those same principles, you can take that same drive, you can take that same courage and skill and motivation and apply it to any other area of your life as well. That's it. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, man, this is just, yeah, this is like one of my favorite things in the world to do. So thank you. Um, just thanks for being here. I absolutely adore you guys. Um, just praying that you got everything you needed to out of this, praying that everything that came through today is what was, was what was meant to come through, that there is absolutely nothing left unsaid, that everything that I've missed, that God would just fill in the gaps for you right now, that your soul would just, just gently and like quietly whisper in your ear what it is that you need to hear around this, guide you to the resources that you need, the people that you need, the coaches that you need to work with, the spiritual gurus and mentors that you need to follow, the people in your life that you need to have conversations with and hear their stories and tell your stories to. I just pray that your soul is just whispering to you right now, your heart is just whispering to you, your mind is just communicating to you, your spirit and your energetic body are just communicating to you everything that you need right now to continue along this journey and to, to continue this healing to access your freedom and the life that is and the joy and the peace and the purpose that is waiting for you on the other side yeah amen amen
All right. I love you, beautiful human. Have the best week ever. Um, if you loved this and you want to see more, I am offering a free audio training series um, as part of my um, energetic new transition into like the, the realms of the energetic. So I'll pop the link to that below and to your name and email address and you will be on my beautiful list with my tribe where I send out weekly email updates and it's just the best ever. I'm doing a little work around that at the moment, but yeah. It's super fun and I love it. And I'm just going to love on you guys hardcore like I have in this video. All right. I love you chickens. Have the best day. Bye. <laughs>